So now we're actually getting to Manasseh and Judah. This section, Judith, this section has uh, something that's not actually in the Bible. Well, Catholic Bibles. Uh, and it is a psalm, basically, called the Prayer of Manasseh. Uh, it is an Orthodox Bible, and it plays an important part in the Christian tradition. As far as Judith and its placement, although you can find various indicating details suggesting different times it might be from, and while there might be endless arguments about the historicity of the story, it seems to me that the author is at least trying to make us imagine this time period. And it's the best fit in the history of Israel. And whoever was writing it was familiar with the history of Israel. Um, moreover, that's what the tradition typically recognizes. So... The history of Manasseh. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign in 696 BC. And he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. The name of his mother was Hafzibah, and he did evil in the according to the idols of the nations which the Lord destroyed from before the face of the children of Israel. And he turned and built up the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. And he set up altars to Baal and made groves as Ahab the king of Israel had done. And he adored all the hosts of heaven and served them. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem I will put my name. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the temple of the Lord. And he made his sons to pass through the fire in the valley of Benenum. He observed dreams, followed divinations, gave himself up to magic arts, had with him magicians and enchanters, and he wrought many evils before the Lord to provoke him to anger. He also set a graven and a molten statue in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever, and I will not make the foot of Israel to be removed, out of the land which I have delivered to their fathers. Yet so if they will take heed to do what I have commanded them, and all the law and the ceremonies and the judgments by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh seduced Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem to do evil beyond all the nations which the Lord had destroyed before the face of the children of Israel. And the Lord spoke in the hand of his servants, the prophets, saying, Because Manasseh, king of Judah, has done these most wicked abominations beyond all that the Amorites did before him, and has made Judah also to sin with his filthy doings, therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring on evils upon Jerusalem and Judah, that whosoever shall hear of them, both his ears shall tingle. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria, and the way to the house of Ahab. And I will efface Jerusalem, as writing's tables are wont to be effaced. And I will erase and turn it, and draw the pencil often over the face of it. And I will leave the remnants of my inheritance, and will deliver them into the hands of their enemies, and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies. Because they have done evil before me, and have continued to provoke me from the day that their fathers came out of Egypt, even to this day. Moreover, Manasseh shed very much innocent blood till he filled Jerusalem up to the mouth. 
besides his sins, with which he made Judah to sin, to do evil before the Lord. Therefore he brought upon them the captains of the army of the king of the Assyrians. This would have to be after 680 BC. And they took Manasseh and carried him bound with chains and fetters to Babylon. And after that, he was in distress. He prayed to the Lord his God and did penance exceedingly before the God of his fathers. And he entreated him and besought him earnestly. And he heard his prayer and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. And Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. One theory on this captivity of Manasseh is that perhaps it wasn't necessarily so much the, the army of the Assyrians coming down to capture him, but it is known that he was trying to work out some treaty with the Assyrians and that he might have gone up to Nineveh to work that out, and they, they held him for longer than he should have been and threatened him at any rate. Continuing on. After this, he built a wall without the city of David on the west side of Gihon in the valley from the entering in of the gate roundabout to Ophel and raised it up to a great height. And he appointed captains of the army in all the fenced cities of Judah. And he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord. The altars also which he had made in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem, and he cast them all out of the city. And he repaired the altar of the Lord and sacrificed upon it victims and peace offerings and praise. And he commanded Judah to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people still sacrificed in the high places to the Lord their God. But the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer to God and the words of the seers that spoke to him in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, are contained in the words of the kings of Israel. His prayer also and his being heard and all his sins and contempt in places wherein he built high places and set up groves and statues before he did penance are written in the words of Hosai. And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house, in the garden of Oza, and Ammon his son reigned in his stead in 640 BC. Ammon was 22 years old when he began to reign in 642 BC, so here we again have a co-regency. And he reigned two years in Jerusalem. And his servants plotted against him and slew the king in his own house. But the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon and made Josiah his son their king in his stead. And they buried him in his sepulcher in the garden of Oza, and his son Josiah reigned in his stead. Oh, Sorry, we're not talking about a co-regency here. We're saying that he was slain in 642, two years after 640. Okay, sorry about that. The prayer of Manasseh, king of Judah, when he was held captive in Babylon. Lord omnipotent God of our fathers, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and of their just seed, which did make heaven and earth, with all the ornaments of them, which has bound the sea with the word of your precept, which has shut up the depth and sealed it with your terrible and laudable name, whom all things dread and tremble at the countenance of your power, because the magnificence of your glory is importable, and the wrath of your threatening upon sinners is intolerable, but the mercy of your promise is infinite and unsearchable. Because you are our Lord, most high, benign, long-suffering, and very merciful, and penitent upon the wickedness of men. You, Lord, according to the multitude of your goodness, have promised penance, 
and remission to them that have sinned to you. And by the multitude of your mercies, you have decreed penance to sinners unto salvation. You, therefore, Lord God of the just, have not appointed penance to the just, Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, them that have not sinned to you, but have appointed penance for me a sinner, because I have sinned above the number of the sand of the sea. My iniquities, Lord, be multiplied, my iniquities be multiplied, and I am not worthy to behold and look upon the height of heaven for the multitude of my iniquities. I am made crooked with many a band of iron, that I cannot lift up my head, and I have not respiration. Because I have stirred up your wrath, and have done evil before you, I have not done your will, and your commandments I have not kept. I have set up abominations, and multiplied offenses, and now I bow the knee of my heart, beseeching goodness of you. I have sinned, Lord, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my iniquities. Wherefore I beseech, desiring you, forgive me, Lord, forgive me, and do not destroy me together with my iniquities. Neither reserve forever being angry evils for me, neither damn me into the lowest place of, this, of the earth. Because you are Lord, God, I say of the penitent, in me you shall show all your goodness. Because you shall save me unworthy according to your great mercy, and I will praise you always all the days of my life. Because all the power of the heavens praise you, and to you is glory forever and ever. Amen. Judith. Now Arphaxad, king of the Medes, had brought many nations under his dominions, and he built a very strong city, which he called Ecbatana, of stones squared and hewed. He made the walls thereof seventy cubits broad and thirty cubits high, and the towers of it he made a hundred cubits high. But on the square of them, each side was extended the space of twenty feet, and he made the gates of it according to the height of the towers, and he gloried as a mighty one in the force of his army and in the glory of his chariots. Now in the twelfth year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar, by this we should probably understand Ashurbanipal, king of the Assyrians, and if it is indeed Ashurbanipal, then this would be 656 B.C. He who reigned in Nineveh, the great city, fought against Arphaxad and overcame him. In the great plain, which is called Ragua, above the Euphrates and the Tigris and the Jadson, in the plain of Arioch, the king of the Elysians. Then was the kingdom of Nebuchadnezzar exalted, and his heart was elevated. And he sent to all that dwelt in Cilicia and Damascus and Lebanon, and to the nations that are in Carmelis and Kedar, and to the inhabitants of Galilee, in the great plain of Asdralon, and to all that were in Samaria and beyond the river Jordan, even to Jerusalem, and all the land of Jesse, till you come to the border of Ethiopia. To all these, Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, sent messengers. But they all with one mind refused, and sent them back empty, and rejected them without honor. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, being angry against all that land, swore by his throne and kingdom that he would revenge himself of all those countries. In the thirteenth year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, 655 B.C., the twenty-second day of the first month, the word was given out in the house of Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, that he would revenge himself. And he called all the ancients and all the governors and his officers of war and communicated to them the secret of his counsel. And he said that his thoughts were to bring all the earth under his empire. Then the children of Israel, who dwelt in the land of Judah, 
hearing these things, were exceedingly afraid of him. Dread and horror seized upon their minds, lest he should do the same to Jerusalem and to the temple of the Lord that he had done to other cities and their temples. And they sent into all Samaria round about as far as Jericho, and seized upon all the tops of the mountains. And they compassed their towns with walls and gathered together corn for provision for war. And Eliakim, the priest, wrote to all that were over against Esdralon, which faces the great plain near Dothan, and to all by whom there might be a passage of way that they should take possession of the ascent of the mountains, by which there might be any way to Jerusalem, and should keep watch where the way was narrow between the mountains. And the children of Israel did as the priests of the Lord Eliakim had appointed them. And all the people cried to the Lord with great earnestness, and they humbled their souls in fastings and prayers, both they and their wives. And the priests put on hair cloths, and they caused the little children to lie prostrate before the temple of the Lord, and the altar of the Lord they covered with hair cloth. And they cried to the Lord, the God of Israel, with one accord, that their children might not be made a prey, and the wives carried off, and their cities destroyed, and their holy things profaned, and that they might not be made a reproach to the Gentiles. Then Eliakim, the high priest of the Lord, went about all Israel and spoke to them, saying, Know that the Lord will hear your prayers, if you continue with perseverance and fastings and prayers in the sight of the Lord. Remember Moses, the servant of the Lord, overcame Amalek that trusted in his own strength, and in his power, and in his army, and in his shields, and in his chariots, and in his horsemen, not by fighting with the sword, but by holy prayers. Now it came to pass when Judith, a widow, had heard these words, who was the daughter of Merari, the son of Edox, the son of Joseph, the son of Uzziah, the son of Eli, the son of Jamnor, the son of Gedeon, the son of Raphaim, the son of Akitob, the son of Melchias, the son of Enan, the son of Nathaniah, the son of Salatiel, the son of Simeon, the son of Reuben. And her husband was Manasseh, who died in the time of the barley harvest. For he was standing over them that bound sheaves in the field, and the heat came upon his head. And he died in Bethulia, his own city, and was buried there with his fathers. And Judith, his relict, was a widow now three years and six months. And she made herself a private chamber in the upper part of her house, in which she abode shut up with her maids. And she wore hair cloth upon her loins and fasted all the days of her life, except the Sabbaths and new moons and feasts of the house of Israel. And she was exceedingly beautiful, and her husband left her great riches and very many servants and large possessions of herds of oxen and flocks of sheep. And she was greatly renowned among all because she feared the Lord very much. Neither was there any one that spoke an ill word of her. When therefore she had heard that Uzziah had promised that he would deliver up the city after the fifth day, she sent to the ancients Kabri and Karmi, and they came to her, and she said to them, What is this word by which Uzziah has consented to give up the city to the Assyrians, if within five days there should come no aid to us? And who are you that tempt the Lord? And it came to pass, when she had ceased to cry to the Lord, that she rose from the place wherein she lay prostrate before the Lord, and she called her maid, and going down into her house, she took off her hair cloth and put away the garments of her widowhood. And she washed her body and anointed herself with the best ointment and plaited the hair of her head and put a bonnet upon her head and clothed herself with the garments of her gladness and put sandals on her feet and took her bracelets and lilies and earlets and rings and adorned herself with all her ornaments. And the Lord also gave her more beauty, because all this dressing up did not proceed from sensuality, but from virtue. And therefore the Lord increased this, her beauty, so that 
she appeared to all men's eyes incomparably lovely. But Judith, praying to the Lord, passed through the gates, she and her maid. And it came to pass, when she went down the hill about break of day, that the watchmen of the Assyrians met her and stopped her, saying, From where do you come, or where are you going? And she answered, I am a daughter of the Hebrews, and I am fled from them, because I knew that they would be made a prey to you, because they despised you, and would not of their own accord yield themselves, that they might find mercy in your sight. And when the men had heard her words, they beheld her face, and their eyes were amazed, for they wondered exceedingly at her beauty. And they said to her, You have saved your life by taking this resolution to come down to our Lord. And be assured of this, that when you shall stand before him, he will treat you well, and you will be most acceptable to his heart. And they brought her to the tent of Holofernes, telling him of her. And when she was come into his presence, immediately Holofernes was caught by his eyes. And his officers said to him, Who can despise the people of the Hebrews who have such beautiful women, that we should think it worth our while for their sakes to fight against them? And Judith, seeing Holofernes sitting under a canopy, which was woven of purple and gold, with emeralds and precious stones, after she had looked on his face, bowed down to him, prostrating herself to the ground. And the servants of Holofernes lifted her up by the command of their master. And it came to pass, on the fourth day, that Holofernes made a supper for his servants and said to Vagao, his eunuch, Go and persuade that Hebrew woman to consent of her own accord to dwell with me. For it is looked upon as shameful among the Assyrians if a woman mock a man by doing so as to pass free from him. Then Vago went in to Judith and said, Let not my good maid be afraid to go in to my lord, that she may be honored before his face, that she may eat with him and drink wine and be merry. And Judith answered him, Who am I that I should gainsay my Lord? And when it was grown late, his servants made haste to the lodgings, and Vagao shut the chamber doors and went his way. And they were all overcharged with wine. And Judith was alone in the chamber, but Holofernes lay on his bed, fast asleep, being exceedingly drunk. And Judith spoke to her maid to stand outside before the chamber and to watch. And Judith stood before the bed, praying with tears, and the motion of her lips in silence, saying, Strengthen me, Lord God of Israel, and in this hour look on the works of my hands, that as you have promised you may raise up Jerusalem your city, and that I may bring to pass that which I have purposed, having a belief that it might be done by you. And when she had said this, she went to the pillar that was at his bed's head and loosed his sword that hung tied upon it. And when she had drawn it out, she took him by the hair of his head and said, Strengthen me, Lord God, at this hour. And she struck twice upon his neck and cut off his head and took off his canopy from the pillars, and rolled away his headless body. And after a while she went out and delivered the head of Holofernes to her maid, and bade her put it into her wallet. And when all the army heard that Holofernes was beheaded, courage and counsel fled from them, and being seized with trembling and fear, they thought only to save themselves by flight so that no one spoke to his neighbor, but hanging down the head, leaving all things behind, they made haste to escape from the Hebrews, who, as they heard, were coming armed upon them, and fled by the ways of the fields and the paths of the hills. So the children of Israel, seeing them fleeing, followed after them. 
And they went down, sounding with trumpets and shouting after them. And Uzziah sent messengers through all the cities and countries of Israel. And every country and every city sent their chosen young men armed after them, and they pursued them with the edge of the sword until they came to the extremities of their confines. And the rest that were in Bethulia went into the camp of the Assyrians and took away the spoils which the Assyrians and their flight had left behind them, and they were laden exceedingly. And Joachim the high priest came from Jerusalem to Bethulia with all his ancients to see Judith. And when she was come out to him, they all blessed her with one voice, saying, You are the glory of Jerusalem, you are the joy of Israel, you are the honor of our people. For you have done manfully, and your heart has been strengthened, because you have loved chastity, and after your husband have not known any other. Therefore also the hand of the Lord has strengthened you, and therefore you shall be blessed forever. And the people said, So be it, so be it. Then Judith sung this canticle to the Lord, saying, Let us sing a hymn to the Lord. Let us sing a new hymn to our God. Adonai, the Lord, great are you and glorious in your power, and no one can overcome you. Let all your creatures serve you, because you have spoken and they were made. You sent forth your spirit, and they were created, and there is no one that can resist your voice. The mountain shall be moved from the foundations with the waters. The rock shall melt as wax before your face. But they that fear you shall be great with you in all things. Woe be to the nation that rises up against my people, for the Lord Almighty will take revenge on them. In the day of judgment he will visit them. For he will give fire and worms into their flesh, that they may burn and feel forever. And it came to pass after these things that all the people after the victory came to Jerusalem to adore the Lord. And as soon as they were purified, they all offered holocausts and vows and their promises. And Judith offered for an anathema of oblivion all the arms of Holofernes, which the people gave her, and the canopy that she had taken away out of his chamber. And after those days, every man returned to his house. And Judith was made great in Bethulia, and she was most renowned in all the land of Israel. And chastity was joined to her virtue, so that she knew no man all the days of her life, after the death of Manasseh her husband. And on festival days she came forth with great glory, and she abode in her husband's house a hundred and five years, and made her handmaid free, and she died and was buried with her husband in Bethulia. And all the people mourned for seven days. And all the time of her life there was none that troubled Israel, nor many years after her death. But the day of the festivity of this victory is received by the Hebrews in the number of holy days, and is religiously observed by the Jews from that time until this day.